joy of finding spring water. That's the joy of it. That's not even to mention the levitational qualities of spring water, the consciousness properties of spring water, the structural properties of spring water, the higher level of intelligence that you will gain when you drink structured water because the molecular arrangement of that dihydrogen oxide is in a formation. And when you drink water that's in a formation, it conducts in formation and you become more intelligent. I promise you, it will network your brain beyond anything you thought was possible. Here's what I do. I get the glass bottle, I go to the hardware store, I get a cork. See that bottle? It's got a cork. The corks breathe just a little bit. I bring that water home. Now it's going to be cold because the water in the deep earth is cold. I wrap that in a vest or a blanket or a jacket and I put it in the north part of my house somewhere where it's the coolest. And I let that water stay cold. Sealed up and cold. And it stays cold. It'll stay cold. Do you know water has the greatest thermal retention property of any known substance? That means if water is cold, it will resist raising its temperature more than any substance. That's why water boiling takes so long to boil, like a, a watched pot never boils. It takes so long to boil because water resists temperature change. And you know, by the way, not only is water the best at, at resisting temperature change, it's the best at your body temperature. And that's why your body temperature is the body temperature it is. So if you pack away cold water and insulate it, it will stay cold like a thermos. It'll stay cold a long time. And that cold, see, look, water as it cools contracts. And all the molecules come together and they start to arrange themselves intelligently like a crystal, like a liquid crystal. When it heats up, the water molecules begin to spread apart. Eventually, they become steam and they spread off and the whole structure is lost because the molecules move apart from each other. When you store your water, if you store it cold, you store those molecules tightly together, packed in an arrangement till you're ready to drink it. Then take it out, put it in a glass or a jar, and drink it at the temperature you like it. Keep your water cold, store it. You can get enough water from your spring in one day to last you one month, and that means it's like going to church, but you don't have to go so much and not pay 10% of your income. <laughs> Springs are my church. Springs and Vitamix, that's my church. So, you can go... <laughs> TM. Um, you can... <laughs> You can go once a month, get enough water, pack it away, store it, and you're all set for the whole month. You got all the water you need. Your friends are going to want it as soon as they taste it. Anybody who's here has tasted spring water? Real spring water. Not, not, from, not, from, not, not from Hands down, if it's from a bottle you're talking about. Who's drank spring water from the Mount Shasta under the full moon yesterday? Guess what? You will today because a friend of ours has brought 15 gallons that we're going to be sharing with you at the end of this uh, presentation. So you have to try out. Hey, Aaron, you want to stand up a sec? We can just clap. Thank you, Aaron, very much for that. Very generous contribution for the best we can ever. Thank you very much, Aaron. All right, so I know a lot of you heard me talk about water. I'm not going to go on about it too much longer, but here's what I want to say. I travel like this, which means when I get on airplanes, I need a lot of little three-ounce containers that fit in one quart Ziploc bag. I get a little bit of flack for that when they pull that out. They got corked little glass bottles in a Ziploc bag. And I got that bottle full in my in my stow luggage, right? So that I can, because you can't have liquids, because, you know, I mean, that could be, I don't know, you might be a terrorist if you have water. Right? So, so what happens is I get off the plane, right? And I've got down to my last little shot of water, and I got that, and I drink that, and by the next day, I'm waiting for the guy who's supposed to show up from down south with five gallons of spring water for me. And he doesn't show. And he doesn't show. And my mouth's drawing out. And I'm thinking, where's my water? Oh my god, where's this guy? He's trapped because of those forest fires going on right now, and he's not going to show up. I started to panic, like, I need water, what am I going to do? I'm going to get water, I can't drink all the water, I can't, I can't talk, what am I going to do? I'm eating aloe vera leaves. <laughs> and Aaron shows up with 15 gallons of spring water, so yeah. man, I just talk. I just want to mention something. I read a story this week uh, that this whole town was outraged that they discovered that this school had more Coke machines than water bubblers. But I, I was reading that, and I was and I was outraged because the school had water bubblers, and people drink those that water that comes out of those bubblers without even thinking about it. And that's why I value Daniel's insights so much because he so intelligently reveals things that we maybe never even occurred to us. Like maybe there's a spring right near your home. Maybe there's a spring under your home. And you've just never even occurred to you to look at it. Or maybe you even know about a spring, but you think it's not something that's worth drinking or, or partaking. I, and I want to say this. My personal experience, I can't, you know, you all got to take personal self-responsibility in this. But I have never encountered one spring in three years of drinking from hundreds of springs. I have never gotten sick from a spring. 
I've never experienced contamination from a spring. I've never seen that anyone get sick from a spring. I've only had good results. Only had good results. A lot of people say, Daniel, if I can't get to a spring, what's the next best thing? The next best thing is an artesian well. You definitely can find someone with an artesian well. All an artesian well is, is when we drill down beneath the bedrock into the aquifers. It's like making an artificial spring. That's different than a dug well, which is the water sitting on top of the rock. That water gets polluted. But if you drill down, somebody's got a, an artesian well just side out, outside the city site, you can go fill up from there, and that's a really great place to start. That's an excellent place to start. So, let's anchor this in. Water. It's an element. When you drink the water from the place where you are, your blood's made out of the place where you are. Talk about grounding yourself into an area that you're living in, grounding both by having your feet on the ground, but also bringing that nutrition in via water. How do we make ourselves out of our environment? How do we integrate with the four elements? Well, you're not going to integrate with the four elements if your water comes from Fiji. Right? Your body, then your blood, is made out of water from Fiji and plastic. But if you drink the water from where you live, you become part of the environment where you live. We're like the only species being made out of things that aren't from where we are. So I really encourage you to give that a try, to take that into your consciousness and know that it's possible. Because when I first decided to do that, I didn't think it was possible. I've been doing it three years. So you can do it. That's wild water. And you travel quite a bit in cities. And I know it's a little bit of preparation. But um, you know what? That database is going to allow us to, to be in touch with each other. Um, websites like yours allow us to be in touch with each other because you can best connect with people. www.bestdamer.com. You can connect with people in different places. So hey, you know you're going to LA. Get in touch. That's what I did. Hey, I need some spring water. Someone's going to deliver it. So you can connect. You can make that possible. Just like at first when you hear about raw food, it's like, how am I going to do that? And then all of a sudden, once you do it, it's like the universe does it for you. Same with the water, but you make the commitment first inside your heart. So that's what I want to say about water. Water is an element. You're made out of it. It's where we want to start. It's the substance of the fish tank. Start thinking about it. Start feeling it. And know that water is related to your emotions and your subconscious. And if you want to clear set of emotions, you want clear subconscious. you got to have clear water. Bottom line. One, one, one more water comment. One more water comment. This is the latest. A lot of you might not have heard me say this. This is new information for me. The number one target area of the human body for fluoride. You know what? We all knew it's in the teeth. We all knew it's in the bones. There's another spot. Third eye, the pineal gland. Pineal gland is the number one area of the body that becomes encrusted with sodium fluoride. Dave's been talking about calcification. Calcification is pretty nasty. Fluoridation is a little bit nastier. Why do they ask you to add fluoride to your teeth? Because it's harder than calcium. What if you took something harder than calcium and encrusted your pineal gland? How would your serotonin production be? How would your melatonin production be? You know, those regulate your moods. How would you feel if your pineal gland couldn't produce dimethyltryptamine? What if your pineal gland couldn't grow anymore because you are fluoridated from birth? Walmart sells baby water with fluoride. How do we bypass that? We wash, yeah, in plastic. We can wash that out. When you drink, I, thank you, well, it just keeps going and going, right? The depth of it. We've got to bypass it. So by drinking this water I'm talking about, you can wash that fluoride out of your body. All right, let's move on to the second wild component, which is wild food. Look, wild food's where it's at. Bottom line, what's great about a lot of